Mr. Higgins. Who was the trial today? Sure am, Jimmy. Ain't missed the day yet. Well, how's the trial going for Olaf? He ain't got a chance. Not after Sophie Smith's testimony yesterday. Well, gosh, Olaf's been working for Ole Miss Blake for the last five years now. Always talked about how good she was to him. Why would he want to kill her? Guess money makes folks do queer things, Jimmy. Why did you have to get up in the witness stands and say those things about poor Olaf? Hey, Jimmy! Well, Hank, I'll pick up them handbills on my way back from the trial. Yes, sir. Say, Mr. Brown, you, you still think Olaf's innocent, don't you? I'm afraid not, Jimmy. I was always set such store by it. But the evidence against him is powerful convincing. But, but, but we know Olaf better than you old folks do. Why, he's always willing to help us, and he's always so happy. Why, he wouldn't hurt a fly. Mm, I don't know, Jimmy. Human nature is pretty hard to figure. Well, see you later. I thought I told you to keep away from my typewriter. Well, yes, sir. I'm sorry. An open letter to the citizens of Brownsville. Olaf Jensen is not guilty. Well, that's awful important. More important than my orders? Oh, no, sir. But, gee, Olaf needs help. Well, this guy's a public defender. Nobody's standing up for him in the trial. So, I thought if I wrote about it, why, you might put it in the paper. Look, Jimmy, what you or I or all of Brownsville thinks or says is not going to help Olaf. He's being tried on evidence, and that's what's going to... Nothing else. What about the power of the press? You want to be a big reporter someday, don't you? Well, sure I do. Well, then you stick to your own work, or you won't even be an office boy very long. Yes, sir. Better put a little less power of the press to create some type. Think you'll be in court all day? I guess so. You better tend to that stuff for Bender's ad on the uh, Rotary Club picnic. What about an editorial? Oh, I won't have time to get one out before court opens. Run a book review. I guess Olaf's chances are pretty thin, huh? Thin? Why, they're transparent. When Sophie Smith remembered all the details of her conversation on the phone with Mrs. Blake, there was a guilty look on every face in the jury. The same Joe P. body was fit to be tied. Only tried every way by cross-examination to shake her testimony, but she never varied a syllable. Well, that's not fair. I don't see why I should believe her word and not Olaf's. Would you like to be free to ask him? Then you go tend to your job and let the law tend to Olaf's. Here's your Brownsville Civic News. Use it on page two. Uh, I guess I'll be safe to run the uh, case goes to jury headline. If they do get it today, we'll have a verdict in time to go to press. I don't think they'll be out long. I'll phone you and let you know how things look. Good morning, Hank. Good. Si, if that's the process you're carrying there, I'm not here. Guilty conscience, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> well, relax. This is only the Blake Estate probate notice. Warned in today? Oh. Take care of it, will you, Hank? Say, how about a little statement from the executor? Did she leave everything to eat? Yes, but he'll never retire on it. Of course, the farm's in pretty good shape. But the stock she had aren't paying anything, and apparently the only cash is the few hundred dollars they found hidden in Olaf's room. You know, Si, I think Joe Peters still believes that Swede's innocent. As an honest defense attorney should. A fine reporter you are. <laughs> Court's been open ten minutes. Without the bugle being there, what do you want to bet? I won't bet. I know who judge me too well. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any words with Mrs. Blake? Same words you've been always using. All of milk cow, all of clean bar. No, no, no. I mean an argument. Angry words. No, no. Mrs. Blake never is angry with Olaf. Always kind. You testified that on the evening of the murder, when you went to your sleeping quarters in the Blake barn, you found this note fastened on the door. And while you were reading it, you heard a car drive away. Yeah, that's been true. And 
fact, there's a lot of things I want to tell you, Mr. Henshaw. The newspaper's supposed to stand for justice. Give the man on the street both sides of a question. But did you do that in a Blake case? No. Well, you wouldn't even print anything that'd help Olaf. Well, if I had this newspaper, things would be different. Nobody could work for me that was unfair. I'd fire you and I'd fire Hank, too. Yes, sir, I'd fire both of you. Well, just like that. And for... Oh. Hello. Oh, don't stop. You were going swell. Gee, you must think I'm crazy or something. I, uh... Well, a fella has to let off steam every once in a while. Say, if I didn't once in a while, I'd pop. And after you do, why, everything's okay. Can I do anything for you? Well, thanks. I would like to wait for Mr. Henshaw. Oh, he'll be in court all day. Well, then I'd better run along. Well, maybe I can help you. After all, that's what I'm here for. Won't you come in and sit down? Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll take it for you. Thanks. There you are. Oh! <laughs> I guess I'll have to get that fixed. Well, uh, are you his secretary? Well, not exactly. You see, when he's busy, I sort of look after things for him. Oh, I see. Yeah, you see, it's, it's, uh, well, us newspaper men have to be ready for almost anything nowadays. I'm taking journalism in school next year. Of course, Uncle Albert says the newspaper is no place for a girl, but... Well, that's silly. Boy, there's lots of girls. Uncle Albert? You mean, he, he's your uncle? Yes, I'm Mildred Henshaw. I've come to spend the summer with him and Aunt Emily. Oh, gee, I'm glad. Well, that is, I guess they'll be glad to have you. Well, I, I'm certainly glad to be here. Say, this is an article for the society column. You being here and all that. Gosh. Mr. and Mrs. Henshaw have a visitor from the city. We hope she likes Brownsville and enjoys her summer with us. What's going on here? The boss told you to keep away from his desk and leave that typewriter alone. But you don't understand. I right? understand that you're here to work, not to have girls hanging around making eyes at you. I guess you don't know who I am. No, and I don't care a hoot. Just get that out of here and stop wasting this boy's time. And you stop being an old crab, Hank Edwards. I'm ashamed of you. Don't you recognize me yet? I'm Mildred. No, it can't be. Yes, little Millie. And a fine welcome you give me. Well, that's what you get for growing up so. But when did you get here? The folks didn't expect you this afternoon train. Well, I caught an earlier one, so I walked over from the station to see if Uncle Albert could take me out to the house. Oh, that's too bad. He'll be in court all day. I can take her in my car, Hank. Well, that'll be fine, Hank, then I won't have to wait for Uncle. All right. Drive carefully and see if you get back here to work. Well, I will. Don't worry. I'll be back in a minute. Be sure this gets in the paper. Oh, I'm sorry. My car's an open job. Hope you don't mind getting blown a bit. No, I love open cars. Here it is, right there. Oh, let me help you down. I'll put your bag in the back. I'm afraid you'll have to climb over. The doors don't work so good. Better look out for your feet, though. There's a couple of holes in the floorboards. I had a swell horn, but they swiped that, too. Boy, can this baby travel. When I get her out in the open road, I'll really open her up. Well, what about the tire? Just a slow leak. Say, you mind if I stop at the courthouse a minute and see Olaf? Oh, but who's Olaf? About the best friend I have. He's being held for murder. Murder? How awful. Yeah, but he didn't do it. It's just they got a lot of evidence to make it look that way. Gee, that's too bad. Can I go to the courthouse with you? I'm not gonna go in, but you can take a peek through the window like I do. So I uh... Say, would you pull a spark down while I turn it over? Well, where is it? It's right there in the steering wheel. <laughs> no, the other one. This one? That's it. 
As, as soon as she starts, why, why, why push her up again? See that knob on the dashboard? Here? Yeah. Oh, pump it a couple of times. You better watch out, though. It squirts oil sometimes. Got a kind of baby, these hopped up motors. What's that for? It's not cold. Transmission sort of acts up. It might get a little dirty. Say, are you sure this thing runs? Oh, sure. Of course it runs. I, uh, I done what papers say. I went to pasture in, um, uh, near Crick. And you waited there a long time, but the writer of the note never came to meet you. No, that's him on the witness stand. No, no. Nobody come. Look, Jimmy, he sees you. He certainly doesn't look like a murderer. He isn't. So you went back to the house and found your kind employer lying on the floor, dead. Do you expect us to believe that? I don't know she been dead, Mr. Lawyer. Only awfully bad sick. I hear something say to me in here, uh, Olaf, take her to doctor quick. It's a very touching story. But it isn't going to save you, Olaf Jensen, because in forgetting to destroy this little book, from which you got the paper to write your alibi note, you convicted yourself. You murdered Mary Blake in cold blood. Your Honor, I object. Objection sustained. That lawyer sure is nasty. He's got it in for Olaf, all right. I don't see how anybody could believe that who knows Olaf. Knows how good and kind he is. There isn't a kid or a stray pup in town he hasn't looked after. Couldn't suddenly change into a murderer. Yeah, after seeing him, you couldn't make me believe he killed anyone. I don't think so much of that lawyer of his, either. Well, we better get going. Hank will be sore. I sure feel sorry for Olaf. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, uh, hello, Lucy. Uh, well, I gotta be getting along. I'm in an awful hurry. Uh, Oh, meet Mildred Henshaw. This is Lucy Peters. Hello, hello. Are you related to Mr. Henshaw? Yes, he's my uncle. I just got here, and Jimmy's taking me out to the house now. How long are you going to stay? All summer. <laughs> hey, Mildred, the spark. You gotta pump that. Yeah, I know. Don't pay any attention to Lucy, Mildred. She's always clowning. Oh, that's all right. Gee, I guess I better get you home. The jury bought you a new spring bonnet today. Cy Burton bet me five dollars they'd be out at least an hour. Albert Henshaw, you know very well I'd never touch a penny that came from gambling. Can I have it, Papa? I want to buy a machine gun. <laughs> Did I tell you to sit in that chair and we left the table? You set a very bad example for your son, Albert. And what must Mildred think? 
Well, judging from the look on her face, she must share your opinion. Oh, it, it isn't that, Uncle. It's just that I don't see how you can joke in bed about a poor man being convicted. Well, I don't see any reason for a long face because a murderer got what he deserved. Oh, but he isn't a murderer, Uncle Albert. Why, how can you believe such a thing when you know what a good man he's always been? And how kind he is to children and animals. Why, Jimmy Atkins told Now, listen, child. Jimmy Atkins is a nice boy. And his loyalty to Olaf is fine. And I admire him for it. But don't go to quoting him. I've had about all I could stand from him during the trial. After all, I didn't convict the man. I simply printed the facts in the case. But Jimmy said... Mildred, you heard what your uncle said. Jimmy likes Mildred. Mildred likes Didn't Jimmy. I tell you to sit in that chair? Well, they do. Why did it take him two hours to drive home? Oh, don't be silly, Junior. Jimmy was telling me something. Well, I couldn't be rude and refuse to listen, could I? Of course not, my dear. A lady is never rude. And a little gentleman is never rude either. Well, Jimmy, how's the new story coming? Has the hero found the girl's brother yet? No. I'm not in the mood to work on it tonight, Grandma. What's the matter? You and Lucy had a quarrel? No, why? Well, you usually take her to the movies on Wednesday night. Doesn't mean I always have to, does it? Gee, Grandma, it only gets tired taking the same girl all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is she pretty, Jimmy? Who? Mildred Henshaw. How did you know about her? Well, my eyes may not be so good, but I can still read typing. Oh, that. Come for a visit, hadn't she? Yeah. I drove her out to her house this afternoon. Oh. Kind of took a liking to her, eh? You will, too, when you meet her, Grandma. She's, she's so different. I've never met another girl like her. <sighs> Morning, Mr. Henshaw. Your niece is certainly a nice girl. How is she this morning? Full of your crazy notions about Olaf. I wish you'd keep them to yourself, Jimmy. Well, she asked me about the trial, and I told her. Well, it's all over now. I don't want to hear any more about it. Yes, sir. Oh, forgot my glasses again. 102. Yes, yes, 102. Hello, Mildred. Uncle Albert. Say, did I leave my reading glasses lying around anywhere? No, I can't wait that long. I've got a lot of work to do. I'll go out and get them for you, Mr. Henshaw. All right, wait a minute. I'll send Jimmy out for them. And you hurry back here, too. Well, yes, sir. Stupid thing for me to do. Oh, I've got to get this chair fixed again. I can see that. about his glasses, so I brought him out to you. Oh, thanks. Nice day, isn't it? Yes, I'll say. Think you're gonna like it here? Oh, I do already. Well, I guess I better be getting these back to your uncle. Yes, you better have. Well, goodbye. Must be getting too much gas or something. Want me to do the smart business for you? Yeah, please. All set? Yes, turn her over. Well, I uh, guess I'd better be going. Oh, what are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, don't you want to take me for a ride? Oh, yeah, sure. Darn the luck. Out of gas, huh? Yeah. 
Well, what are you going to do? Push. There's a gas station down the road a ways. It's pretty hard to push a car alone. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, I stubbed my toe. Hello, Eve. Hi, Eru. What can I do for you? Did you find the Captain McGann stack anywhere, Eve? Must have drove off without it. No, I ain't seen it around. Uh, when did you lose it, Ru? Mm, don't know. Must have been the last time I got gas. Oh, I remember. It was the night Mrs. Blake... Uh, well, uh, come to think of it, you weren't here. Your wife waited on me. That's mighty funny. And Court Eve said he never left here till 9 o'clock after the station was closed. Well, Mandy ain't said nothing about it. Uh, I'll have a look around inside. Oh, well, thank you. What's he got to do with Mrs. Blake? She's his aunt. And she was killed on the very same night before 8 o'clock. Gee, Jimmy, do you think he could have done it? His own aunt? Yeah, here she is, Ruth. Well, thank you, Eve. I don't know, but where was he that he couldn't tell the truth in court? He looks like a murderer. What are you going to do? What can I do? It's See right. you soon. Yeah. Sorry. Get this thing started and follow that car. Come on. Mr. Tyler, Mr. Tyler, wait. Jimmy, what are you so head up about? Say, Mr. Tyler, did East Wife say we went the other night? Huh? What night? The night of the murder. We heard what you said about him being gone from the station. And just who are you? She's Mr. Henshaw's niece. Now look, about Eve. Just a minute. What is all this? Mr. Tyler, a life of an innocent man depends on you. Your family and neighbors are in danger. Huh? Mrs. Blake's murderer hasn't been caught. You mean that Olaf's broke jail? Oh, no. She means the real murderer. Olaf's innocent and we can prove it if you help us. And just think of the headlines in the bugle when Jimmy turns in the story. Public spirited citizen helps reporters solve murder. Saves innocent man from the chair. The world needs more men like Rufus Tyler. Well, now, I'll help any way I can. Well, think hard, Mr. Tyler. Anything she said to you about that night? Let me see. No. I can't remember nothing she said. Well, that's because you're trying so too hard. Close your eyes and sort of picture what was going on. Mm -hmm. It is sort of coming back to me. Yep. Manda was working the pump, and I was joshing about how funny it was to be getting gas from a lady. But she weren't in no mind for joshing. Seemed sort of mad about something. Claimed that Olive's had a boy to help out of for her, but the times have been too poorly since they... You see, Jimmy, the motive. They needed money. Well, that's great, Mr. Tyler. Uh, did she say where Eve had gone that night? Why, Jingo, she sure did. Said he went to town on an errand, and he's going to stop by and have a bit of supper at the Chinaman's. I'll say he went on an errand, but it wasn't in town. He went to his aunt's farm to kill her. And to plant the money in poor Olaf's room to make it look like he was guilty. Oh, shucks. Wait a minute, kids. Now, why would Eve do such a thing? Didn't Miss Blake's will leave everything to him? And didn't she say they needed money? Well, she sure did. Well, what more reason do you need for a murder? And you can prove that he lied when he was on the witness stand when he said he was at the station when the crime was committed. Now, wait a minute. Maybe he was at the Chinaman's like Manda said, having supper. Oh, I don't believe it. Let's go now and see. And if he was there, it's nothing but an alibi. Yeah, Mr. Tyler, we'll meet you at Charlie's. Mm, all right, I'll be there. Bye. Bye.
Sure, him come Charlie's plenty of times. Like the Chinese food very much. Was he there on the night of May the 4th about 8 o'clock? Maybe so. We gotta be sure, Charlie. Now think hard. The night of the murder, remember? Uh, you know, East that old Miss Blake. That was Chinese feast day, Charlie Sellerflick. Oh, then, then you know whether Eve was there or not. Charlie, no. Nobody here. All having feasts at the house of honorable grandfather. You mean the place was all closed up? Where's East Alibi now? We gotta go and straighten these things out. Now look, you take Charlie Millard back to Grandma's place and wait for me. I gotta go round up Mr. Henshaw and figure a way to get Eve there so we can face him with the evidence. Oh, Jimmy, be careful. If he knew what you were up to, he might murder you too. Now don't you worry about me. Just don't let these two fellas out of your sight. And when you get to Grandma's, don't talk to anybody till I get there. Well, come on, get in the car. Come on, get in the car. Come on, Charlie. Brownsville, 2244. Crossroad service station. Yeah, this is him speaking. Well, who's this? I'm calling for Grandma Atkins. She wants you to come out to her house right away. She's got a very important message for you and I can't wait. I got a flat tire on the truck. Well, can't Jimmy bring it out? Oh, no. She wants to give it to you personally. Well, all right, but you better hurry. Did you tell her I was waiting for those glasses? Well, how long ago did they leave? Oh, dear. Emily says Mildred's nowhere to be found. Says she hasn't seen her since she went out on the porch to give Jimmy my glasses. Where do you suppose they can be, Hank? Ah, oh, take it easy, A.P. That wreck of his probably broke down again. I'll break him down. Emily out there close to hysterics and hear me with a big desk full of work and can't see to do it. Mr. Henshaw. Mr. Henshaw. Where's Mildred? Is she hurt? Hurt? No, she's at my house. And we gotta get out there right away. I got a terrific story. You give me my glasses and get back to your work. Mr. Henshaw, you don't understand. I've discovered the real murderer, old Miss Blake. What? You get back to your work. But don't you see, Eve's on his way out there and we gotta be there. Eve killed his aunt and Mildred's out there hanging on the only two witnesses we got to prove it. Look, if you get my niece mixed up in any of your crazy shenanigans, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll... Please, I'll, Mr. Henshaw, listen to me. I'll explain it. Sit down, uh, Rufus, won't Thank you? you? Oh, Mama, you must have Mildred Henshaw. Yes, I am. <laughs> Jimmy. They told me all about you, my dear. You know what? Uh, I think you favor your uncle. Yes, you, <laughs> yes, you do. Wait a minute, Mr. Henshaw, and I'll help you out. It's okay. Old Eve isn't here yet. Say, do you think as soon as we get his confession, we'll have to turn him over to the sheriff? Or can we wait till the paper comes out? Well, let's wait till we get the confession. Now, I'll handle this. This could be pretty serious if you're barking up the wrong tree, you know. Well, I'm not. Don't worry. All right. Uh, what's all this about? Uh, well, Jimmy will be here in a minute. And if you don't mind, we'd rather he told you. Oh, <laughs> this is sort of mysterious, like a movie. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, this is real nice, Mr. Henshaw. I've just been having a nice chat with your pretty niece. Mm -hmm. uh, go in, won't you, please? Thank you. Just a minute, Jimmy Atkins. What's going on around here? Oh, why are Rufus and that Chinaman here? Now, look, what? Grandma, I haven't got time to tell you about it now. It's awful important. So if you just stay out of the parlor and we're finished, you'll have a big surprise. <laughs> Mildred, uh, these boys want to talk business, and we'll go in the kitchen and fix some tea and cookies until after they're through, you know? Yes, Millie, you run around with Grandma Atkins. Oh, but Jimmy, I want to be here when he comes. Well, maybe he wouldn't talk about it in front of a girl. Perhaps you better go. Oh, all right. Well, how do you think you're going to like our little Brownsville, my dear? Oh, it's very nice. Of course, I haven't seen much of it yet. Well, there, there isn't much of it to see. Now, uh, Ruth, Jimmy tells me the night of the murder that you were at Eve's service station about 8 o'clock and he wasn't there. <laughs> That's right. Now, what makes you so sure of the date? Well, I remember it's on the 9th. Uh, dear, would you mind getting those uh, cookies out of the tin can, putting them on that dish? Yes, sir. That's right, Mr. Jimmy, that's right. 
You see, Mr. Henshaw? Yes, I see that Eve wasn't at his service station or at Charlie's, but that doesn't prove he was killing his aunt. Well, if he had a good alibi, why would he want to lie in court? I'll bet that's Eve now. I'll go let him in. Oh, why, hello, Eve. Where's your grandma? I gotta see her. Well, sure, come on in. Right there in the parlor. Here we are. Hello, Henshaw. <laughs> What's going on around here, anyway? Grandma Atkins sends for me, and I walk in on a convention. Well, Grandma didn't send for you. I did. Uh, sit down, Heath. We'd like you to answer a few questions. Now, look at here, Angel. I didn't close up my station, break my neck getting here, just to answer questions. Well, we want to know where you were the night your aunt was murdered. At the station where I am every night, but Sunday. Amanda seemed to think you was in town having supper at Charlie's. Well, then, maybe that's where I was. Having some of your good chop suey, eh, Charlie? No, no kitchen chop suey. Your alibi's no good, Eve. Alibi? Alibi for what? For murder, that's what. For killing your aunt for her money and trying to plant the blame on poor Olaf. Why, you young... Oh, no, you no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, Eve. Losing your temper isn't going to do any good. Oh, that's why you all stand for me. Because you think that I murdered Aunt Mary. Listen, they're fighting. Oh, dear. A cup of tea will calm them down. Oh, may I carry that? No, thing? thank you. I always do this myself. Will you open the door, please? You may own a newspaper, but that doesn't give you the right to put a self-respecting citizen under a third degree. Land sakes, can't you boys talk business without getting all head up and yelling at each other? I'm surprised at you. You would yell too if you were in my place, Grandma. Oh, we'll sit and have a cup of tea. It'll make you feel better. I'm leaving. You'll hold your horses a minute, Eve. I want to pay you that money I owe you. What money? Why, the money for the kerosene that you brought me the night your poor Aunt Mary was killed. So it did. Can you remember what time I was here, Grandma? Eight o'clock, wasn't it? Yeah. About eight o'clock, because the Good Neighbor program was on the radio. Well, you ought to remember. You stood right there in the kitchen door and listened to it. You got me in a fine mess. Thanks a lot, Grandma. Well, gentlemen, look as if my lawyer would be asking you some questions. Good afternoon. What's eating F? You're fired. And you come with me. Um, sorry, Miss Atkins, but I guess I better be getting back to the store. But th thank you just the same. I'm sure sorry about the way this turned out, Mr. Tyler. Ah, you. Excuse, please, from Honorable T, Miss Atkins. Maybe rice she burn up. I go now. I'm sitting on you, I see you, huh? Sherry Atkins, come here. Jimmy Atkins, I have a feeling in my bones that you're at the bottom of all these funny goings on. Yes, ma'am, I guess I am. Been playing reporter again, huh? And you promised me. Well, we ran into some evidence that made it look like Eve was the one that killed Miss Blake. All I could think of was how to save Olaf. Would have been a big story for the Bugle, too. How was I to know he was here with you at the time of the murder? Have a cup of tea? No, no thanks, Grandma. Didn't you ever make a mistake when you were young? Yes, man paid for them. Why shouldn't he? Because it was more my fault than it was his. If I hadn't encouraged him, it would never have happened. That's no excuse. He should have had better sense than to listen to a silly girl. Well, what's silly about running down clues on a big story? Big mess, you mean? What makes an office boy butting into things he knows nothing about? Because he doesn't want to be an office boy all his life. He wants to be a big reporter. He's got to learn how, hasn't he? Not at my expense, he doesn't. There wouldn't be anybody worthwhile in the world if someone didn't give him a chance. Why? Just look at all the big newspapers. You look at him. I'm looking at a lawsuit. Now, Jimmy's fired and he stays fired, and I don't want to hear anything more about it. at the office with Uncle. He's pretty mad, isn't he? Yeah. 
I tried everything, but it didn't do any good. Well, thanks, Mildred. But I don't blame him. Guess I better forget all about ever being a big newspaper man, too. Well, you can't want to be one very bad. Well, it's the only thing I do want. Well, then go on with it. Don't let anything stop you. Well, it's pretty easy to say, all right, but the only newspaper in town will give you a job. What do you do? Well, there must be some way. Yep, there is a way. Then I'm going to do it. Well, that's the way to talk. Do you know what Horace Greeley said? No, what? He said, go west, young man. Well, not me. I'm going to go east. Get a job on a big city newspaper and really amount to something. You mean you're going away? Well, I'm always planning to someday. And well, now that this has come up, well, this is the time. Will you be going soon, Jimmy? Yep. Tomorrow. Gee, I wish... I mean, I bet Grandma hates to see you go. Oh, I'll be back to visit every once in a while. But gee, you probably won't be here then, will you? No, I'll be going back to the city pretty soon. Well, but you said you liked it here. Well, I, I thought I did, but there doesn't seem much to do. Well, do you like to fish or swim? Oh, I love to swim. Well, then I'll show you my own private swimming hole. I damn the creek myself. My one spot's even deep enough to dive. Oh, that's swell. Oh, you're going away. Yeah. I thought I'd fired you, Jimmy. Well, yes, sir, you did. I just came if back... If you think you're going to talk me into giving you your job back, you're crazy. Well, I wasn't going to, because I know I don't deserve it. But I would like to say something to Mr. Burton. Go ahead, Jimmy. Well, it's just that the paper didn't have anything to do with what happened yesterday. Nobody did. It was all my fault. Couldn't you explain it to Eve, so... So he wouldn't make any trouble for Mr. Henshaw? I've already talked to Reef, and he's agreed to drop the whole matter. Oh, that's great. Thanks a lot, Mr. Burton. I'm sure glad. Uh, just a minute, son. How'd you like to pick up a half dollar and run an errand for me? I'll be glad to do it for you, but I don't want any money. I've got to run over to Midvale, and I just remember these papers Simpkins has to file at the courthouse. Uh, wait a minute. I'll give you a note of instructions to give Simpkins. I'll tend to it right away. No, no thanks, Mr. Burton. That's okay. I'm sure sorry about everything, Mr. Henshaw. I hope the next job you get, you'll watch your P's and Q's and tend to your business. Oh, yes, sir. I don't know how you could sit there and be so hard-hearted. That's a nice boy, A.P. <laughs> He'll be a whole lot nicer boy and more reliable after he's been without a job for a few days. Good thing he doesn't know what an old bluff you are. <laughs> well, I gotta be off. Well, thanks again for smoothing Eve down, Si. Think nothing of it, till I want a favor from you. <laughs> I think if you go and see him and... I just did. You mean, you asked him to take you back and he wouldn't? He didn't give me a chance to ask. He told me. I felt so sure he would. Not a chance. Well, can we go for a ride or something? Sure, as soon as I do an errand for Mr. Burton. Well, where'd you see him? What'd he say? I'll tell you all about it when I get back. I just got to take these papers up to his office for him. Wait a minute. You dropped one. Oh, gee, thanks. Wouldn't have been so good if I'd lost this. Anything wrong? It's the same kind of papers an old Olaf got. Really, Jimmy? Yeah, and it, it was torn out of the same kind of a notebook, too. Golly, you don't think. Oh, of course it isn't. It couldn't be. I'll be right back. Wait a minute, Jimmy. Why couldn't it be? Well, Mr. Burton's not that kind of a man. He's been Miss Blake's lawyer for years. Oh, so what? They're the worst kind sometimes. Why, in Jane Travers' last movie, the old family lawyer poisoned three people. Yeah, but... If there was only some way we could compare the two notes. Say, Olaf would remember, wouldn't he? Well, sure, but... Will they let us see him? 
Well, I guess so. Well, then what are we waiting for? Oh, listen, Mildred. I'm in enough of a jam as it is. Lost my job and everybody's down on me. Grandma's all upset. What'd they think if I got in another mess? Oh, but you won't. We'll be sure this time before we tell anyone. And just think, Jimmy, what it'll mean to you. Why, you'll be sitting on top of the world, and Uncle Albert will be begging you to come back. But you don't understand. Mr. Burton couldn't have. Well, will it do any harm to talk to Olaf? Well, maybe not, but... Oh, you evidently don't care about your own future. But what about Olaf? Are you just gonna let him die without giving him every chance? Of course not. Well, I'm only asking you to look into it. All right, let's go. Got you some callers, sweet. Hello, Olaf. Jim! <laughs> I'm so glad to see you, my boy. <laughs> Olaf, this is a friend of mine. Any friend of Jimmy is welcome. <laughs> well, please, uh, sit down. We haven't got much time, Olaf, so we'll have to talk fast. We just stumbled onto something that may get you out of here. Oh, it's been too late. The jury says Olaf is guilty. Well, I know you're not, and maybe we can prove it. Here, does this paper mean anything to you? Yeah, it looks like a, a little black book. Well, that's from a different little black book. Uh -huh. Does the writing look the same as it did on the other note? Yeah, look like uh, funny letters, you know, like uh, like little fella make printed, you mean? Hmm. Sure, he disguised his handwriting. Who did? The real murderer. He wrote this note to you just to keep you away from the farm a while. So he could kill Mrs. Blake and hide the money in your room, so that they think you did it. Money is bad thing. It make people lie and steal and, and kill. Always Mrs. Blake, she, she was afraid. But why? She didn't have much money, not even a bank account. That's what they said at the trial. She was afraid of bank too, and, and she had plenty money. I have seen it many times. Where? Where? When she paid all of her wages, she took money from iron box, you know, and, uh, and uh, she, uh, she put everything down in writing, in a little book, and uh, how much she spent for uh, uh, seats, and uh, how much for anything. Every penny she spent, she put down. Did you tell anybody about it? Your lawyer or hers or Eve? No, no, I, I tell nobody. They say all of steal that money too. Uh, Jimmy, don't you tell nobody. Oh, okay, Olaf, we won't. But couldn't you tell us where she kept that box of money? Uh, no. Do you know how we can get in the house? In the house? Oh, yes, uh, through cellar window to Corbin. You know, uh, lettuce is loose there. All right, Jimmy, turns up. Okay, Pete. Well, goodbye, Wolf. We'll goodbye, Jimmy. Goodbye. 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 Yeah. goodbye, young lady. <laughs> Isn't there any other way to get in? I don't think so. Everything's locked up. I'll find a better place for you to get down. Nothing doing. If you can make it, I can. Go on. Okay. Of course not. Gee, I do. 
It's Mrs. Blake's ghost for watching us. That's silly. No such things as ghosts. Probably just a cat or a mouse running over the rafters. Maybe better open a window.
scared of anything. Well, what about this mess? Well, they probably won't find us for months. I'm going to take that account book to Uncle, because I've got a hunch there's plenty in it to fix Burton without his old file. Come on. He probably burned it so nobody could find it. After killing Miss Blake, he certainly wouldn't want to leave any suspicious evidence. Come on, we better get out of here. Hey. Gee. File A, Blake Estate. Come on, let's go. We got him! Oh, we got him! We got him! Back home! It's a real murder! Are you kids starting that all over again? Please, Mr. Henshaw, listen, it's the real thing this time. We got evidence and everything. Here, look for yourself. Where'd you get these? We found it in Miss Blake's house. And here's the files for paper, too. You'll never believe who the murderer is. Of course I won't. And if you kids are stirring up another hornet's nest around here, I'll tell you both. Well, I like that. After all we've been through to get a story for your old paper. We fought the court and sold in the book. He killed it for $11,000 and there's 40000 more. But we didn't have time to find it. Mom, look, look, it's Mildred. Good heavens, what's happened? Look at your face. Mildred, where have you been? Don't you understand, Uncle? We found him, the real murder. We know why he did it. It's the truth, Mr. Henshaw. It's all in that book in her own handwriting. And there's an iron box full of money. Oh, it's all. Oh, I'll scoop you and so are you. Junior. Albert, what are they talking about? We found this Blake's personal ledger and a file of her estate papers, too. You go to jail, I bet you. You take these things right back where you got them. You mean you're not even going to look at them? You're going to let Olaf go to jail when you know we got the proof that he didn't do it? You heard what I said? Come on, as long as they're not interested, we'll go to the sheriff. He'll do something about it. Let me see. Get out of the way, Junior. Oh, look where you're going, Junior. Oh, please push me. Emily, will you take care of your boy? Junior, come out of there. Give us a chance to explain. Come in, young fellow. Tell Mr. Henshaw what time he delivered those papers to you. Uh, at a quarter to two. And they had to be filed by noon. He's cost me a client and a two hundred dollar fee. Oh, that shouldn't bother you. You've still got eleven thousand dollars of Mrs. Blake's money. What? Who is this little brat? Hey, just a minute. You can't talk that way about Mildred. Look here, Burton, that little brat, as you call her, happens to be my niece. Then I think you'd be ashamed. She and this good-for-nothing boy just made a shambles of my office. Mildred, what does he mean? Oh, I don't know, Uncle, unless shambles means making a mess of things, and we did that all right. How dared you do such a thing? Because he's the murderer, and we had to find file A. What did you say, young woman? She said you murdered Mrs. Blake, and we know you did. Rather a serious accusation, my boy. You better have proof. We have plenty of it. Now, you keep out of this. Jimmy, do you realize this is serious? Well, of course. And we've got proof, too. Here's an note that he gave me to take to Mr. Simpkins. You saw him write it. Well, what about it? It's exactly the same kind of papers that no Olaf got. That's what started us looking. And we found her book, and in it, it said she had $40,000. That hasn't been stolen, and it must have been hidden someplace. Well, what's that got to do with Mr. Burton? That's Kim. He probably stole it. Did you, Mr. Burton? Get back to your mother. This is all ridiculous nonsense. Yeah, well, this isn't. It says, due from CB July the 1st, $11,000. And down here she says, C files in CB's office. Well, these are the files, and we found them in Cyrus Burton's office. What was that, Jenny? Well, I don't know. We haven't had time to look. We didn't have much time. Open it now, Jimmy. Just a minute, please. Legally, no one has a right to touch that file. But I shall waive that. I shall insist on its being opened here before you. First, though, I want to answer some of the wild statements made by these two misguided youngsters. The similarity of paper, which Jimmy seems to regard as such conclusive evidence. Here's the little notebook from which I tore the note for Simpkins. Anything unusual about it, A.P.? Certainly not. I buy them by the dozen at the general store. Simpkins has one, you have perhaps, and Hank, on any number of Brownsville's highly respectable citizens. So much for that. As for this other book, I know nothing about it. And if Mrs. Blake had any such amount of money, I only hope it comes to light. My estate fees will be considerably fatter. And last for the $11,000, Simpkins, open the file and give Mr. Henshaw the uh, envelope marked personal. Yes, Mr. Burke. These receipts, all signed by Mary Blake. Exactly. Totaling in all, I believe, $11,000.
That's correct. Well, you two don't seem to be quite as talkative as you were. No, sir. This whole situation is inexcusable, Si. I can't tell you how humiliated I feel. Oh, forget it, A.P. I was provoked, of course, but it's over and done with now, and no serious damage, except to my pride. Well, I appreciate your attitude, Si, but that doesn't alter the fact that in the last 24 hours, these two young mischief makers have gone beyond the bounds of reason, and they've got to be taught a lesson. Oh, please, Mr. Henshaw, don't blame Mildred. It was all my fault. Don't listen to him, Uncle. It was my fault. Don't listen to her, Albert. It's all his doings. He's a menace to the community. What's a menace, Papa? I will be if you don't shut up. Emily, take her home, lock her in her room, and keep her there if she learns to behave. Will we lock her in the cellar? Will she get bread and water? Now you get out of here, and don't even let me catch you near my office, my home, and my family. And if you see me on the street, you run. Yes, sir. Do you mind if I go in and get my things? Go and get them and get out. Jimmy, this is Mildred. I got it. I figured out where Mrs. Blake hid her money. Now listen. He poised himself grotesquely in an attitude of mirth. Huh? What? I can't understand you. What poem? Oh, that. Yeah, I remember. Look, Jimmy, can't you run out of here? I tell you, this is it. I know it is. What? Oh, they're with the Andersons playing cards. Okay, I'll be on the porch waiting for you. Junior, what happened? You stay out until Mama comes home and finds out what you've done to me. Okay, but if you make any more noises like that, I'll call the sheriff. And if you spoil any of my things, you'll get something you won't like. I was sure glad when you phoned. I thought you were locked up. I was, and I'd still be up there, too, if I hadn't gotten sweet little Junior to fall for a gag. But when I found this, I just had to find a way to tell you about it. Come over here by the light. Look, right here. He poised himself grotesquely in an attitude of mirth on a dandruff-covered hassock that was sitting on the hearth. Well, it sounds awful silly to me. Sure, but it's a clue, Jimmy, don't you see? Why else would she have the poem in that book of hers? Well, you may be right. I'm sure of it. Yeah, but do you think your uncle will pay any attention to it? Are you crazy, Jimmy Atkins? Nobody would ever have known there was any money if it wasn't for us and our disgraceful behavior. We aren't going to tell anybody. We're going to find the 40000 ourselves. Then they'll all change their tunes. I don't know, Mildred. I think we ought to tell Mr. Burton. And let him get the credit for it. Nothing doing. Oh, I only thought if we told him, why, he might be grateful and sort of try to square things for us. Well, don't you think we ought to be pretty sure the money's really there? The murderer could have taken it, you know. Or Mrs. Blake might have sort of dreamed up all those figures. Yeah, another false alarm. We would be in a mess. Let's go now and look. Now? Why, it's dark. We couldn't see anything. Well, have you got a flashlight? No, but I got a candle in the car. Come on, we know our way and right where to look. It's a cinch.
somebody's in this room. Now don't be silly. This is the loose by or something. Let's get out of here. Stop it, will you? It's only the storm. Where's the hassock? Well, I don't know. What's the hassock anyway? I don't know. What you did? Well, they always have to be so fancy in poems. Let's start looking. $40,000. It looks like all right. Yeah. Well, I'd better get home before the folks do and see if I can't bribe Junior to keep his trap shut. Hassock, you're not even a real foot. So that's it. You were just about to get your hands on it, and my unexpected arrival upset things, eh? Not at all. I was waiting for you. I felt pretty sure the amazing figures in Mrs. Blake's ledger would bring you sneaking around here tonight. Sneaking? Why, it's my duty to try and uncover all possible assets of the estate. So that you can hide them again? In your own pocket? You've been doing that for ten years. You must be mad. I don't know what you're talking about. No. What about old Jasper Dunn's estate? The Carter girls? And Johnson's widow? You haven't a shred of proof. I didn't have until tonight, when I discovered that those receipts of Mrs. Blake's for $11,000 of forgeries, yes, and the power of attorney, too, with which you've been stealing half her income, until she got suspicious. 
Simpkins, I'm afraid I've underestimated your ability. No. If it hadn't been for the blundering of a couple of children, you would even have gotten away with murder. Because it was you who killed Mary Blake, not Olaf. Oh, boy! by Jimmy Atkins, of whom Brownsville is justly proud. Not bad, huh? I uh, don't suppose you'd care to bother with an item in the society column. For sure, ain't it's news. Miss Mildred Henshaw is giving a dance Saturday evening in honor of Mr. Jimmy Atkins, reporter on the Brownsville Bugle. Gee, honest, Mildred, can I bring a girl? Who? Grandma. <laughs> You had it fixed. Yeah. 